We have some news today on the upcoming AMD launches for November. So these have been rumored for quite some time now. We've covered a lot of those rumors. We've received leaks ourselves on it. But now we have official information from AMD to talk about today. Technically, they're doing one of those uh, unboxing embargoes. We're not participating in that. In fact, we weren't going to film this video at all, except AMD did, and we appreciate this, include some real information that we can release alongside showing this, but that's really all we can do with it, so no point in that. Today we'll talk about some of the specs we got and pricing and release timelines for the 3950X, 3rd Ripper 3, and what I am most interested in, the 3000G processor. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-Lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermal significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. The basic info here first, we are currently in the middle of a lot of Red Dead 2 testing. We've just posted the CPU benchmark, which had some really interesting Ryzen and Intel issues. Uh, not a fault of either CPU maker, but just Rockstar in general. And so we weren't gonna film this, but I wanted to throw it together. This is the board we have first. We have others that should be coming in probably. This one, the only reason I'm showing it is because we're planning to do a PCB analysis of it. Buildzoid will be doing that for our channel. This is a Gigabyte TRX40 motherboard, and yes, that is the official chipset name. We sort of spoiled that a couple weeks ago, but it turned out to be accurate. So TRX40 is the new chipset for this. The compatibility rumors were true, so the previous Threadripper CPUs will not work, uh, at least according to AMD. We haven't officially tried this yet, but AMD says they will not work in this, and there's no reason not to believe them. And then the new Threadripper 3 CPUs will not work in the X399 motherboards. So if you're on that board, you're kind of at a, at a dead end unless you can upgrade maybe to the 2000 series once their prices eventually come down. For the rest of the information we can release today, this is not going to be an editing heavy video. We're just gonna go through the news, get it done, and get it online for you. You can tab away from this video if you like. We might pop up some of the slides from AMD's stuff. Uh, AMD's Ryzen 9 3950X is the same in spec and price as it has been. It's just that the release date's been updated. That is now November 25th. And it's our understanding that Threadripper 3 should also launch on the 25th. There's one CPU that's not true for, and that is the Athlon CPU, which should be the 19th, but all November for that. So the 3950X, if you didn't remember, $750 MSRP, that has not changed. So it remains that price. Still 16 cores, 32 threads. Still 4.7 gigahertz boost, and that's obviously going to be on, on one core in limited workloads. Still 72 megabytes of cache. Also still listed at, as 105 watt TDP. AMD is officially recommending a 280 millimeter closed loop liquid cooler for the 3950X. We definitely agree with them. That's what we use for all of our testing actually. So we fully are in agreement there. Stock cooler is not suitable for that processor. Not really the best for 3900X either. I mean, just straight not the best, but Anyway, the reason I bring up TDP is because the change in uh, recommendation to a 280 CLC does change the TDP formula, so we're not really sure that 105 is, is still accurate, but if basically the thermal resistance changes now, so if they keep this, I could change a few other numbers to make it all work anyway, but if they keep the same T case and T ambient as the 3900X but change thermal resistance, then TDP is different. If they tweak T case and T ambient, then it, it's all, it doesn't matter. TDP is all made up and imaginary anyway. We have a whole video on it, but just kind of a, a, a point of annoyance for us, but whatever. Power we'll look at in benchmarking. So same for performance. AMD released a whole bunch of internal benchmarks for these CPUs. We won't be showing any of them. We're talking about any of them today. Just check back for reviews and you'll get the full story there. We have a whole bunch of testing lined up for it, including a lot of production tests as we've been doing for the last couple of years now. So anyway, November 25th availability and the AMD Athlon 3000G is actually really interesting to us. So we enjoyed the 200GE a lot. That's the previous Athlon. There were a couple others launched around the same time, but the 200GE had the really fun accident of MSI releasing an Agisa version they weren't supposed to for the Tomahawk motherboard, which allowed you to overclock the GE and make it equivalent or better 
uh, versus the other Athlon parts at the time. So you, we got our Athlon 200 GE to like 3.9 or 4.0 gigahertz, which is insane for that processor because it's supposed to be 3.2 gigahertz originally was, was the spec for the 200 GE. Anyway, the 3000 GE, or the 3000 G rather, will be fully unlocked. So that, this is now official. It's not, we don't have to wait for MSI to sneak out a BIOS like MSI always seems to do with its BIOSes. But rather, AMD is officially supporting overclocking for it. That's great. We're excited about that and look forward to it. The budget class builds have been one of our favorite mainstays for builds for a long time. It's just been a while since we've been able to do a new one. So Intel's Pentium line was genuinely very good. I think the 3528 or whatever it was called, that processor was pretty interesting for the time. The 4560 was also not bad, but Intel ended up getting killed by its 14 nanometer shortage. Those prices skyrocketed to the price of an R3 in the first gen Ryzen launch, and they became worthless. Athlon 200 GEs were good though, and the 3000G should carry that. We'll, we'll test it though, don't buy it before we benchmark it. Uh, that one is supposed to be priced at $50, hence why we're excited about it, November 19th for that launch. And the specs that we've been given so far, two cores, four threads, 3.5 gigahertz frequency, flat, no, no boosting mentioned, it's just flat frequency, 300 megahertz higher than the 200GE, and then you can overclock it. And it includes Vega 3 for graphics on the chip, and that's 100 megahertz higher than the previous 200GE for that one. 35 watt TDP, but we don't know what TK's T ambient or thermal resistance are, so that's pointless. The Threadripper stuff, so TR3, the two we've been told about so far include the 3970X and the 3960X. These are pretty straightforward. The 3960X, 24 core, 48 thread part, 3.8 gigahertz base, 4.5 gigahertz boost. So that's, again, that's going to be like one core limited workloads, but you get the idea. 140 megabytes of cache and 1400 USD for the, for the pricing target for MSRP. The 3970X, is a 32 core 64 thread part following up the 2990WX previously. We're waiting to see if there's going to be a 3990WX of some kind because we have a whole lot of engineering documents that, were, that we found uh, in the industry and they seem to indicate an SWRX8 part, uh, whereas this is STRX4. The indication is that there should eventually be an SWRX8, eight channel part and maybe that will be a 3990WX, or maybe it'll never come out. Maybe it was just something that they were thinking about and didn't go through with, but we didn't hear about that today is the point. So SWRX8 as of now still does not exist, and we'll find out if it ever does. But uh, anyway, 3970X is supposed to be $2,000, 144 megabytes of cache, 3.7 gigahertz base, 4.5 boost, and that's the counterpart to the four megabyte cache lower, uh, fewer thread and core count, and uh, $600 cheaper, 3960X. Rest of the information, so again, confirmed not backwards compatible, confirmed not forwards compatible between the two Threadripper families. The chipset has some information that's been detailed officially so far. Uh, it's got eight downlink lanes right now from the CPU to the chipset and then eight uplink lanes from the chipset to the CPU. That is increased by four extra lanes each direction over the mainstream Ryzen desktop platform like X570. This is apparently the chipset and the downlink and the uplink uh, increase is what I th seems like what AMD was saying caused the lack of intercompatibility between Threadripper, uh, from what we understand anyway. And general purpose lanes supposed to be 48 PCIe Gen purpose lanes off of the CPU, and that's in addition to the downlink reserved lanes that you you can't touch, can't change, motherboard vendor can't change. And then you can run two of six different choices for these options. So you can pick two total of these. They are segmented into halves, though. And that is going to be uh, by 4 Gen Purpose PCIe 4, by 4 NVMe, by 4 SATA off of the CPU, which is interesting. And, and that's going to be it. So there's two groups of those. Four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports are supported natively off of the CPU. The uh, memory channeling is going to be quad for this. And then the TRX40 chipset, not the CPU now, but the chipset, supports eight USB 3.2 Gen 2 devices, four USB Gen 2, not just USB 2.0, and uh, eight PCIe Gen 4 general purpose lanes, and then you've got two pick one choices between these, one by four PCIe Gen 4, two by two PCIe Gen 4, and four SATA 3, 
we think this might also be able to be broken into a four by one because they had two instances of one by four for a pick one. That obviously doesn't make sense. So maybe a typo or something. We're not quite sure though, but that's our guess. So anyway, that's all the news. Not going to drag this out and BS you about anything. And we think unboxings are stupid, frankly, so we don't do them. But the motherboard will will just don't don't do the like hype and excited thing, please. We'll just show it because strictly not to generate hype because it's a motherboard. It's, it looks like a motherboard, uh, but that doesn't mean it's uninteresting. It's very interesting. It's just that we want you to save your interest and excitement for the actual coverage, and that's going to include a PCB analysis of this board. So uh, we'll be looking at this in depth with Buildzoid shortly. Check back for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hopefully this low editing, frankly low effort news delivery is good enough for you. We need to get back to the Red Dead 2 stuff and close out our storyline there. Uh, we're very much looking forward to these benchmarks and we encourage you to check back for our reviews and builds with these parts, especially as they compete with the upcoming Intel X series refresh, the 10,000 X series. So that's going to include the $1,000 flagship 10980XE 18 core part, which will now be competing against these new Threadripper parts. Anyway, check back for all that. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, like by picking up one of our shirts or one of our mod mats, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out there as well. I'll see you all next time.